Well, Jane is enchanted by the new next-door neighbors, Mr. and Mrs. Frederick, especially Mrs. Frederick, who is the type of woman who takes the credit for her husband's business success. And by constant driving, she has managed to work Mr. Frederick up from a mere typesetter to a big printing business proprietor. This episode is in alternating scenes between the Ace's bungalow and Mr. Ace's real estate office. But first to the bungalow. It's early afternoon. Jane is speaking to Mrs. Frederick. You mean you go down to your husband's office every day? Oh, no, not every day. I make it a point to drop in at least twice a week, though. I was there Monday, and I'm on my way down now. The days I don't go, I make it a point to call him at least twice a day. And when he has important deals pending, I sometimes call up as many as five times a day. Uh, how often do you visit your husband's office? Oh, now and there. If I happen to be downtown shopping, I sometimes drop in just to kill the time away. How often is that? Oh, I don't know. Not very often. He doesn't like to have me clattering up his office. He always says a woman's place is in the home. Yes. I suspected as much. And uh, you let him get away with it? Yes. Yeah. Jane, you astound me. All right. My dear, I haven't much time now, but we must get together for a nice, long, heart-to-heart talk. You simply must realize that you have as much right to his business problems as he has to your household problems. You'll find that in back of every man's success, there's always a woman. Oh, not my husband. He doesn't look at another woman. No, I don't mean another woman. I mean you. You are the woman. My dear, we'll take Baxter, for instance. When I first met him, he was a typesetter in a newspaper office. He started with nothing. Well, Miss Grace is a real estate man who started with a lot. Oh, you mean he was uh, wealthy at one time? Oh, no, he just had one lot. Now he has a big business. But uh, it could be bigger. Oh, I guess it could. Of course it could. And that's where you come in. Where? Well, by helping him, the way I'd help my husband. Baxter doesn't do a thing without my knowledge or consent, without first talking over his problems with me. Quite many the time I've dropped in at his office and what seems like an accidental visit, and there I've met and conquered a stubborn client. Simply a smile in the right place, sir. An invitation to dinner or a cocktail? You've no idea how important those touches can be. The woman's touch, especially. You can do that, can't you? Well, I can smile. I don't drink. Oh, I don't either. Just a sip. It's not the drink. It's the atmosphere of friendship it builds up. It breaks down the cold business resistance. Baxter will tell you himself that I've solved many a problem for him. Well, I don't know if my husband has any problems. They all have problems. And they all need help. They're all alike. Why, what would you say if I told you that I even pick out back his business suit, his ties, his shirt? I say you do. Of course I do. Clothes play just as important a part in a man's business as they do in a woman's social. First impressions are very important. Baxter never looks his best in brown. I see to it that he doesn't wear a tan suit. Tan shoes, at least not to his office. Well, my husband only wears blue suits in the winter and gray suits in the summer and vice versa. I never thought very much about his clothes. Well, you can see how important it is, can't you? Well, yes, the way you tell us. Of course it's important. Oh, I've got hours of talk for you, I can see that. But I, I really must be running now. Well, goodbye, my dear. Think over what I told you, won't you? Yes, I will. It's very interesting the way you tell us. Oh, there's Roy with the car now. Goodbye, Jane. Goodbye, Ethel. Have a nice time. Mm, I don't know about that. Uh, Laura, come here. I want to talk to you. Did you call me? Uh, yes, Laura. Here's what I want you to do. Get all, out all of Miss Grace's shoes out of his closet and bring them in here. Oh, three of them in? Yes, all of them. So, is something wrong me? Well, there may be with his suits, I don't know. You mean the moth, man? Moth? No, I don't mean moth. I've got to start looking after things around here. What things, man? His suits and his ties. Uh, uh, Jay's ties, too. His ties, man? Mm-hmm. I cleaned that chili sauce off his blue tie. Is something wrong with the other ties, man? I don't know. There's something wrong with something, and I'm going to find out what it is. But the mister doesn't like to have me fooling around with his things, man. He told me. Laura, did you hear what I said? Mm-hmm. And all his shirts, too. 
Jake Smith? Yes, I'm going to start looking after his things. I've got to see that he wears the right things. No canned shoes and things like that. Shoes, too, man? Yes, everything. First impressions last. Yes, Smith. What? Oh, you wouldn't understand it, Laurie. It's a business expression. Well, it's no business of mine, but I don't think the mister likes for us to touch his thing. It's no business of yours is right. It's his business I'm thinking about. If he makes a good impression in his business, he can put over some big deals, and I've got to see that he does. Does what, man? Makes a good impression. From now on, I'll see that he wears the right kind of suits and ties and things. Now, you go ahead, Laura, and bring everything out here. I'm going to call him up and see what's going on down at the office. Oh, hurry, Laura. Don't stand there like that. Yes, ma'am. Uh, here's a letter, Betty, that I think you can answer without any dictation. Just quote the prices of those apartments out there. I understand, Mr. Lee. Now, let's see what else we have. What's this all about? Oh, yes. Uh, take a letter to, uh, Humley and Son. Uh, gentlemen... Oh, what is the matter with this lighter? I just filled it this morning. Well, why doesn't it light? Mm, let me see it, Uncle Lane. No, wait. I'll see if I can uh, answer that, will you? Don't see why this thing doesn't work. Hello? Hello, Betty? Yes? Is Uncle Lane there? Oh, yes, Aunt Jane. He's here. Just a minute. It's Aunt Jane. I think this wick needs pulling out or something. We've had this thing for about a year. They don't last forever, you know. I only paid 65 cents for it. Well, it should light if you filled it. Hello? Hello, dear. Hello, Jane. What's on your mind? Nothing. What's on yours? Nothing. Any problems today? What? Any problems around there today? What are you selling? Selling? I'm not selling anything. I said, are there any problems around the office today? Well, uh, yes, we've got quite a problem here. Oh, you do? Do you want me to come down? Come down? No, no, I think we'll work it out. Well, what is it, dear? Well, uh, it, it's my lighter. It won't work. Your what? My lighter. The lighter that I light my cigars with. It won't work. We're trying to fix it. Is that what you're doing now? Yes, we paid 65 cents for it. We've only had it a year. It's quite a problem. Well, maybe I can help you. Well, what would you suggest? Well, have you tried pulling out the wick? Uh, I think Betty's trying that now. It still doesn't work, though. Yes. No, Jane, is it? Now, uh, what did you call me about? What? Well, that's all. Just to see if there was anything going on. I thought maybe you had something to or something. Well, this may turn out to be. We may have to spend another 65 cents for a new lighter if we don't get anywhere. Either get a new lighter or a new thumb. Well, I hope not, dear. I do, too, Jane. Well, it's been cozy talking to you. Well, goodbye, then. Goodbye. <laughs> what was all that about? Uh, how about it, Betty? I think it's worn out. We'll have to get a new one. Oh, all right. Let it go. Don't bother with it now. Now, uh, where were we? Uh... Tumley and Sons, gentlemen. Oh, yes. Um, thanks for your early reply on that garage deal, and I shall have the estimates for you by the first of the week. Trusting we can reach a deal agreeable to both sides, I remain sincerely yours. I think that about finishes the mail for today, Betty. Hello? <laughs> Hello, Betty. Let me talk to your uncle again. Yes, Aunt Jane. Just a minute. Again? What is this? Hello? How about matches, How about what? Matches. Why can't you use matches to light the cigars with? Is, is, is that what you called me up about? Yes, I just thought of it after I hung up. Why do you have to spend 65 cents for a new lighter? Matches don't cost anything. Uh, yes, that's quite a solution there, Jane. Yeah. You have that great work, Jane. You're welcome. And anything you have that comes up like that, you let me know, dear. I've been helping you with your problems all the time. Uh, did anybody come in for a big deal or something? For a big... Uh, no, not since you called a minute ago. Well, if they do and you need my help, well, just let me know. I'll talk it over with you. Very touching to have a woman to talk to about it. What did you say? I say it's touching to have a woman to talk to, especially if you're white. Isn't this awful? Uh, well, Jane, it's been nice hearing from you. Uh, don't call me again sometime. Oh, I will. Oh, I just met here. Yes? Uh, which shoes are you wearing? Sh did you say shoes? Yes, which shoes have you got on now? Oh, Jane, are you going to make me take my feet out from under my desk just to answer that question? Oh, can't you answer a simple question? Oh, all right. I'm wearing my shoes with the run-down heels. Uh, what color are they? Pants. I thought so. 
you talking about? I think you're going over all your clothes, dear. Something's got to be done. Over my... Now, Jay, you stay out of there. I've got everything arranged just where I can lay my hands on whatever I want. There's nothing here you want. I never thought such a suit in those ties. Ties? Have you... What are you doing? Well, Saturday afternoon, we're going shopping. Who? You and I. I'll be out a night for you and... You'll pick... Look, Jane, I haven't the time right now to argue with you. Will you just let everything stay as it is until I get home tonight? No, Laura and I are busy cleaning out your closet. And we're Laura and you? Yes, we are. Oh, Jane, why don't you stop? Haven't you got anything else to... <clears throat> Look, <clears throat> go next door and visit with Mrs. Frederick. You, you said you liked her so much. But she's gone. She's gone downtown to her husband's office. Now, remember, it's a date. Saturday afternoon, and I won't take this. Well, I've always bought my own clothes. Yes, and look at it. I'll see if you get the right thing. Now. Listen, Jane, I can stand on my own feet. Well, do they have to be wearing those awful pants you? Oh, I I'll talk it over with you later. What a life. Yes, it's a short life, but a married one. Yeah, you said it, a married one. Isn't that all? Well, <laughs> Jane's a nap pupil. And it looks as if Mr. Ace's life is going to become quite complicated. We learn more about that when...